Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lax rats alike, welcome back to Slip the Picks, episode three, where we bring you everything you need to know heading into a weekend filled with betting on the Premier Lacrosse League. Today is Friday, June 24th, probably. I think it's that date. Uh, And the league is heading down to Baltimore for a weekend that always delivers. I'm Jordy from Barstool. With me, as always, we've got Dukes and Billy Football on the mic, and we are also lucky enough to to be joined this week by your good friend and mine. We've got Dan Arestia with us. He's a uh, just an elite member of Lax Twitter. You can find his lacrosse content on at Lacrosse Flash. Uh, he's also doing a bunch of gambling content with Picks Wise. So, uh, Dan, pleasure to to have you on. And how's it going this week? Doing well, guys. Happy to be here. Pumped to be talking about some Lax gambling. We don't do this enough. We we don't at all. Billy Dukes. How, how, uh, might might have a Do, uh, Deuce, no, on. it's just biz. No, what do you, Billy? What are you allowed? Stay, stay focused. Biz, stay focused. Oh my god! All right, I'm well, hold on. That well, well, no, well, no, no, I love biz. this. I love this. I love this. I love this, Billy. I, I'm just happy that you're on time for this podcast. Thank you. I know it's been difficult. Look, look guys, former please. NLL player Biz Nasty uh, distracted dudes during our taping and distracted <laughs> from the real fact that the Redwoods are back. The Redwoods are back. I'm officially putting the Redwoods back. They're back. Nice. I like this little flip-flop that Billy's been doing this past couple of weeks where he, like, a team loses. He's like, they're never going to win a lacrosse game again. Then they win, and then all of a sudden he's back in on them. Uh, Billy, I, I'm not going to lie. That shirt fired me up for this episode. We are going to go at each other's necks all episode long. I'm looking forward to I'm this. I'm ready. But... I'm very ready. Yeah, would, yeah. I, would I, know, love, yeah. I would love to know Biz's lock of the week. Feel like as a as a former NLL guy himself, he uh, I mean he had a, a tremendous showing with the uh, Vancouver Warriors just a few years back. Uh, training camp, I think he lasted about five minutes. Has to be has to be pulling for the chaos and uh, and all those bandit boys coming back. Uh, but yeah, I mean, should is, is is there any housekeeping to get to before we we really dive into whether or not the Redwoods are back? I mean, they're they're starting us off this weekend at a nice little six thirty on a Friday afternoon, right? So it's you're getting done work. You maybe head over to your favorite watering hole. Hopefully the weather's nice. Maybe you come off of playing a you know a round of nine, get the beers going, get your beverages going, and you've got a pro lacrosse to watch on ESPN two as well. So. Um, I mean, we don't have to get right into picks, but I am actually interested now. Do the Redwoods come out? Like, are they, are they thriving again? Or is this just a, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think a forest fire is coming their way. I don't, I don't know if that's oh, like, I, I don't know if California is dealing with any of those right now. So I don't know if that was insensitive. Um, but I mean, are we going to jump right into it? Chaos were some well, is like the best defense. I'd say has one of the best defenses, and they proved to play well against it. They, historically, maybe, but I'm pretty sure that right now they're like in the bottom two of defenses, which is like it probably should be the biggest concern for the chaos going forward, considering that they have all their short stick D middies, they have all their pulls, and they have their all world goalie. So the fact that right now they're at the bottom two of the PLO defensive standings should be worrisome. Um, I don't think that the Redwoods are back by any means necessary i think that they like we said the last episode of the crease they had one good quarter that's it one good third quarter and that's all they've really shown all year long i think they got the best of plays in that third quarter of the chaos game but besides that nothing really too too thrilling to be hyped up as as a redwoods fan um i don't know if you share those same thoughts dan but i i'm still i'm still looking for more out of the redwoods I, i'm on the redwoods or back train i'm a believer in the redwoods there's something about like it's not like data driven at all or like quantifiable, but the way Miles Jones stepped into that two pointer and let that thing go, there was like weeks and weeks of offensive frustration behind that shot that he took. He caught that feed and he shot it like he hated it. And there's something about like letting one of those go and seeing it goes in. That's, that's like a, that's, that's like a major moment to me, like a season changing moment. I thought, you know, the woods were awesome on the ride in that game. They had some ride back turnovers. They're making like gritty plays. They had four assists in the second half. They came into that game with four assists all season. Like they're, they didn't have a two man goal. I think all year. No, they had one two man game goal all year coming in. They had three to start the third quarter in that game. They found these gears to their offense and to their, to their game that like just were completely missing in the first few weeks. 
Um, and I think they're probably feeling really good about it. I think that team's biggest problem coming in the last week was the locker room was probably just not feeling great. They're frustrated. I really think they miss Kyle Harrison who retired, but um, you know, I, I think the players have kind of gotten their arms around what they're trying to be and their, their identity on offense. And I think you showed up in the field come the second half of that game. The biggest thing for the Redwoods, yeah, I think you nailed it, was that they showed fight. They showed competitiveness. And to see Rob Pinnell get amped up after that first Roger Garnsey goal, I think shows a lot that at least this team will compete and show fire. I'm still not necessarily up, up in arms being like, okay, this is, this is the same team that we've seen over the past three years. I'm not necessarily sure that I'd even label them as a contender. Uh, I, I, right now I'm, I'm labeling them as a pretender that probably makes the playoffs. I'm, I'm still, I'm still a little, I'm sold on the fact and Dan, I, I feel like you might pay a little bit more attention to this than, than I have on my radar right now, but with how the team USA tryouts went, I like, I, I feel like that game out of Rob Pinnell was more of a, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that he really wants to win in the PLL, but like, I feel like the timing of that game, the gritty ride backs, like the amount of emotion, like I feel like something must have happened at that USA tryout where he saw himself kind of somewhere on the bubble and needed to prove himself. Uh, yeah. There. Yeah. I, I think there's that. And I think the, a lot of the chatter around this team from, from myself, from, I know, I think, you know, some other people were talking about this team, like, yo, where's the veteran leadership to straighten this team out right now after that Chrome game where they put up three goals. If you're Rob Padell and you're reading that, like, where's the veteran leadership? What about me? I think, I think Rob is saying, you know, that's why you see him fired up after the Garnsey goal. And then he goes to the team USA tryouts, like you're saying. And you know, it's, it's not like he's just this automatic lock to be the QB of an offense on team USA. Again, there's some young guys there who are coming for his spot. Um, so I, I think, you know, you, you might've seen that fire get lit under Rob Pinnell this last week. The biggest contribution was Henningberg who really had sort of found his place in the offense as like the distributor they had him playing in front of in front pl playing from midfield and you know usually i know he's more comfortable at the x i sat next to his father at the game it sort of got the whole lowdown and that's sort of what swayed me on the redwoods are back because i think they really just started vibing and you know i think there may have been too many you know cooks in the kitchen but now we got a couple sous chefs so it's all working out right Go, Billy, I, I love, I love, I love the kitchen reference. Um, so I don't want to stop you while you're on a roll. Um, but like, is, is your mic brushing up against your shirt? Damn. <laughs> Billy, are, are, you, are you playing Call of Duty with a machine gun right now? <laughs> now he, now the machine uh, gun's turned off. Might be muted. Either way, I, I, I listen. I'm, a, I'm a sucker. You made good for points. I'm a sucker for kitchen references, so I'm going to kind of lean towards – I'm going to take Billy's side a little bit on this one. Um, I do think a really interesting uh, factor heading into this game, especially at home – so, I mean, it like – all right, so Dukes, like, you'll always say it's Long Island. I'll always say that it's Philly. Dan, I'm sure that you'll – I mean, Connecticut's not, like, the lax capital. It's a high school lacrosse. It, it, it's right up there. But, like, as far as, like, pro lacrosse – I don't think that there's a bigger stage possible than Baltimore just because of how many people are always going to pack it. So not only do we have this huge stage set up for Redwoods whip snakes, but you've rolled back the, the calendar, you, you flip it back a, a couple months or maybe just a month at this point. I don't really know uh, how many weeks were my brain scrambled because it's uh, summer, but you got a whole bunch of Notre Dame guys on the Redwoods. You've got a whole bunch of Maryland guys on the whip snakes. This is a matchup that a lot of people were hoping to see in the college tournament. So now you've got on the biggest stage that you could possibly set up for the regular season of the PLL in Baltimore, Notre Dame versus Maryland Dukes. This is a, a, a famous matchup for you specifically. Um, so I, I, you'd be crazy to think that there's not a little bit of that on the line heading into this one. There's gotta be a lot of Donna chatter on the sidelines for this uh, 6 30 PM game on ESPN two. Look, I'll just be pretty blunt about this. When you're talking about Long Island, you want to bring up Long Island, Philly, Baltimore, I just got to state my case very quickly. If we're talking about talent and the, who has the best lacrosse, it's Long Island. But if you're talking about who shows out, who loves lacrosse the most, I might give it to Baltimore. Baltimore guys are a different breed. They live, love lacrosse, they breathe it. They're a different animal. Straight up, they're a different animal. Long Island guys just really good at it. Baltimore guys are just like in love with it. 
but yeah, there's gonna this, there's a lot of hype be, uh, behind this game. I mean, for the past three, four years now, this is the first rivalry, in my opinion, in the PLL. Um, it's always kind of a game you could throw out the analytics, throw out the statistics, and just 11 on 11, see who's the better man. So yeah, I'm, I'm fired up for this one. It's, it's going to have a different feel to it. This is the first time that truly I think that there's one team above the other. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I think that this is a great game to start off the weekend in Baltimore, televised on ESPN too. It's going to be some fiery competitors out there. All right. Well then, uh, I mean, let, let's just get into some picks on this one then. So if you head over to the Barstool Sportsbook, uh, you right now are looking at whip snakes are uh, right now minus one and a half. If you're looking on the money line, you've got the Redwoods as the underdog heading into this one. Um, pretty, pretty clear why, uh, but they're at plus 155. Uh, whip snakes are, are there on the money line minus 200 and the over under on this game set at 22 and a half uh, should just mention real quick. So far, the the every whip snakes game has gone under. So uh, just just a little little trend to to keep in mind here as you head into this one. Uh, but Dan, I mean, you've been locked in with the gambling content all season so far. So we'll let you uh, take away with the, these first picks. Yeah, like you said, every whip game has gone under, and two of the three redwoods games have gone under as well. There's not a whole lot of uh, overs getting hit between these two teams, but I, uh, I'm i on the Redwoods plus one and a half in this. I'm feeling okay about the Redwoods in this game. Um, you know, I, there's a couple things that kind of make me feel this way. Number one, the way the Whip Snakes defense plays is to take away the doorstep, take away the low wings, protect the interior. It's what they do really well. They anticipate really well. They know where you want to go with the ball and they try and, you know, fight it off, especially when it's inside. I think that's what gave them success against the Atlas last week. As you saw plays where like Tim Muller was ahead of where Chris Gray was going on a cut and there's just nothing there. They snuffed out the Atlas offense that way. The Woods, if they play like they did last week, where you have, like Billy said, you have Henningberg playing behind the goal, humming feeds up top to guys like Miles, Sergio Perkovic is healthy, Nakai Montgomery can have two point range. That's kind of a scheme that I think sort of attacks what the Whips defense does well in that they're going to suck and play in the middle. The up top around the arc, there's some availability to get twos off. Uh, Burnlor has given up four two-point goals this year. I think the Woods have taken the third most twos in the league. I think you saw Miles feeling his rhythm a little bit. You know, Sergio led the league in twos a year ago. I think this is a game where you could see, you know, if if the Woods can get possessions, if TD can somehow battle with Nardella enough to keep it close to 50-50, I think the Woods can have success shooting on Burnlor and they can keep this game close. I think they can wind up, you know, winning outright would be a stretch, but I think the one and a half is something they can do. Billy, you I'm, go ahead. I'm also a fan of the one and a half. I did also have the under. I'll show you in my book because of that exact same reason. Two out of the three Redwoods. No, I, I literally had that stat. Two out of no, three the Redwoods. No, the book was hilarious. I'll, I'll yeah, show no, you I book. have it in my book right here. I wrote it all down. But uh, I agree with it. I would even I'd even sprinkle a little on Redwood money line. I just I just put a little on there. Right, a little, a little confidence. Uh, I think Nardella is not playing. Like, honestly, about two years ago, I thought he was the MVP of the league just because he was such a dominant force on the faceoff facts. Now, I mean, he's not – he still is a dominant force, but I don't think he's going to play as big of a role as we've seen him play in past seasons. All right. Well, I'm going to debunk that stat that Billy just said because Joe Nardella right now has the second best faceoff uh, percentage in the PLL. So that's a Duke's right, fact of but, the day. No, but check out like, like but, what do you? But like? I will say, but I will say it is a, definitely a little bit skewed because I saw Dan. You had a stat today talking about the clamp percentage between yeah. Nardella winning like 94. He has 94 percent of the clamps. TD yeah, when he like wins the clamp, when he wins the clamp, he wins the clamp something like 66 percent of the time. Or no, I have that wrong. He wins the clamp uh, 57% of the time, and he winds up winning the faceoff. Right now, about 94% of the time, he wins the clamp. But he has an entire game of facing off against yes. Zach Courier, skewing that stat. Yep. He played That's... the, you know, Withers left that Water Dogs game in the first quarter. So it's still like, even if you skew that down significantly, he's still got a big edge. Yeah, that's legitimately what I wrote down in my notes. I said skewed because of the Water Dogs game, but still going, he went 44% against Baptiste, who right now I'd put down as my MVP of the league. 
Um, TD just as highly as I think of TD, he's not looking like the player or the rookie that he was last year. I mean, 46% against Trevor, then against Farrell, he went 39 and then 53 against uh, TK. So look, I'm kind of, and then the two games last year, TD went 52% and then 37% in the second showing against the whip stakes. I like Nordella to have the edge in this battle. And then if you're looking at the goalie battle, Burn Lores, Troutner hasn't done. I'm a, I'm a huge Timmy Troutner guy. You will not, never find someone that tries to root for Troutner more than me. He's a goalie that talks shit to shooters. He's confident in his ability. But right uh, now, I, I, I met his sister one time at a bar in Annapolis. I think that she might root a little bit harder. I just want to debunk yours. If, if you're out here debunking stats, oh, I'm going to debunk yours. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, now, okay. Now I see how this show is going to go on. Everyone's on <laughs> fucking edge around here. <laughs> no, no look at stats. <laughs> yeah. We, we just, numbers. We, we, have, we haven't brought numbers or stats one time to the show. And now we're just throwing them left and right. Like it's fucking <laughs> shit against the I wall. I thought this was gut stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, no. So, so Zed is going to come back in this game. I think that the whipstakes will control possession. I still think that they have the best defense in the league. And again, like I said earlier in the show, I don't think that the Redwoods offense has necessarily done anything besides play one good quarter in the third quarter. The, the two point shooting against Burn Lord is an absolute outstanding stat. I think that that could definitely draw them within the one and a half line, but even Troutner's last game, he had what eight saves and only saw 20 shots. The whipstakes aren't going to put up 20 shots. They're going to put up 40 plus shots on this Redwoods team. And when we're talking about Jules, uh, Bill, you're talking about Jules coming out of the box, going to X initiating the offense. That's the way that the Redwoods, in my eyes, that's how their offense is going to go. But the, the short stick D mid is you got Ty Warner, who I believe is one top two D midi in the league. So I don't think he's going to have as easy of a time against the chaos. So yeah, my pick right now is whip stakes minus one and a half and under 22 and a half. I think Zed, Zed's going to come back. show so he belongs in this offense. Gutty comes up to midfield. I like the way that the whip stakes are uh, going to trend. Yeah, my my whole pick. So again, like I'm I'm glad that you finally brought up the that Zed's coming back. Um, now, typically, you know, you're you're talking about a guy who's coming back after playing a full season in the NLL. He just won a championship. You know, a lot of these guys, you might think, all right, like they're going to be coming in, they're going to be playing a little guilty, right? Like they might have got a little carried away with the championship celebration. Maybe they've been on a nice little like five day bender, and you know they just have to kind of brush themselves off to get ready for this game. Zed seems like such a, a wholesome cat that he was probably, you know, he probably went out and, and hit the wall like two and a half hours after winning the, the like as soon as they landed back in Colorado. Um, so I'm not too worried about uh, Zed heading into this game. I will say. It, it depends on the start that the Redwoods get, if they can keep this close or not. Like if they can have that seven goal third quarter that they had last week against the chaos at some point in the first half, while you're still like, I mean, Zed's just so smooth Rambo. So smooth, like they can work off of each other so well, like it's not going to take them that long to finally click, but it might be a little bit of a, mm -hmm. of a bumpy start. Like, so if the Redwoods can get out to a hot start, and then before Zed and Rambo really lock themselves in, and then that just starts opening up Jay Carlson a little bit more, then they have a chance to keep it tight. Um, but if, if the Redwoods don't come out in those first two quarters and build themselves up a little lead, like that second half is going to be all whip snakes. So my money right now would be whip snakes minus one and a half. Um, and also this, this is going to be a, a big time episode for me for just like, fading what should happen so i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the over in this one because if everything's trending unders 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 the one thing that i found out these first few weeks of the pll season i don't know dick so if it looks like it's gonna go one way i'm just gonna fade that and go to the other so i got whips minus one and a half and the over but not by much it'll be like it's 22 like, like and a half so on the barstool sports yeah book. it's 22 yeah. and a half on the barstool sports book like give me like a like a 13 10 little little nail biter game there two quick notes whips right now they have the best defense in the league and the woods have the worst offense and another thing that i'm really looking forward to is i think gutty really has had a strong season so far as the second third attackman so really seeing him come out of the box i'd love to see him have that jewels role for the that he has on the woods i mean he's not going to initiate the offense but having the shorty being able to find the the, the passing lanes find shooters like brad smith uh chanachuk so I hope that Gutty can continue his strong season coming out of the box. I think you're going to see a nice game from Matt Rambo too. Matt Rambo against the Woods 
uh, is is usually a lock for for some big time numbers. In his career against the Woods, he's got a game with eight points, seven points, and six points twice. So when oh, he and, plays the Woods, he brings it. Like he's and, he's and, and not only not only I've against, always seen the stats. <laughs> not only not only not only against the Woods, but also on Homewood. Yeah. So he, a, he, a, like, play, is, a place where he stars really, aligning. Yeah. This is the stars aligning for for the big Rambo game. Oh my god! The way that that just clicked, I'm absolutely gassed. I got a coffee on the way here. I was like, I got to get jazzed up for this. We got Dan and Resky in the studio. The whole the Maryland Homewood thing. I oh, I'm gonna try to get I'm gonna try to get a player props on the Barstool Sportsbook by the start of game time because if there's player props out there, we don't use the term lock around here. But I'm heavily leaning towards Matt Rambo over props. That, that, <laughs> that is <laughs> we gotta figure that out. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, that is uh, that's game one of the weekend. Uh, game two. Now, here's the thing. I've I've got a real bugaboo with game two here, and it's all about the start time. Um, but game two, we've got the chaos and the water dog. So the Chaus, they're going to be getting all their big dogs back from the bandits. So this is going to be a completely different team than we've seen so far this season, taking on the water dogs, uh, water dogs will have Dylan Ward, um, whether or not he's playing or not still yet to be deterred by the time that we're, I mean, by the time that you're listening to this, you probably know, but by the time that we're recording this, we're in this like no man's land. Either way, Dylan Ward will be there. Um, so this is Friday, 9.15 on ESPN Plus. Uh, chaos right now, minus one and a half on the Barstool Sportsbook. You can get them on the money line at minus 148 and the Water Dogs at plus 115. Just a couple of losers, a couple of big time losers in this game. It's the toilet bowl. Both teams 0-3. Uh, over under on this one set at 23 and a half. Um, and I'll tell you what, the, the biggest loser of them all is going to be me trying to force myself to stay awake at 9.15 on a Friday. Friday. This is uh, for anyone out there who, who's washed up. This is this is going to be a this is going to be a battle for all of us. So, uh, Dukes, Billy, you, you guys are still young pups out there. Uh, probably still have a little bit more energy, but this is this is one where I'm going to really need to see this chaos offense get themselves going if I have any chance of staying awake. Well, this yeah, one's going to be a, a real finger bite, nail biter, if you ask me. But uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> no, when I think the chaos, I think they're going to bounce back from the Redwoods and take this money line. But I think it's definitely going to be an under game. The water dogs, I do not think stand a chance. They're just not clicking. Whoa. All right. Well, I'll say this. You were talking about me and Billy being dumb guns. Yeah, me and Billy know how to put on a show when we go out. Um, um, but uh, uh, when we're with clients, uh, 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 but yeah, uh, no, I think. I, I'm going to chirp Billy all episode long, but yeah, I actually, I'll, I'll say I, I like the water dogs in this. I mean, I don't think that's a surprise to Jordy. He knows that I'm, I'm, I'm a dog's guy through and through. You think that I'm the owner. You think that I'd be on part of my take with the way that I support the dogs, but the, you got the way I'm looking at it right now, I still believe in the water dogs defense. I I've been saying that I think when Ward comes back, he'll get them in order. I like the water dogs offense. I like their wing play. I like everything really about the dogs. Chaos get a lot of people back too. So it's interesting to see how they'll mesh after the couple of weeks off getting to the offense. I don't really think they'll have any problems, but the face-off battle Adler's not going to be available. If Adler was available, I'd probably be leaning towards the chaos, but I really liked what I saw last week get against two, with, with Tucci get against Farrell. He won 47% of the draws. I think it's going to be close in possessions. Um, and then, yeah, the biggest question mark I really have is, how will Ward adapt from being a box goalie to a field goalie? So he could have one of those games where he started off last year and he wasn't really saving any beach balls. And then all of a sudden he goes in these games. He's like, okay, he's the MVP of this league. He's the best goalie arguably with blaze. So that's my one question mark really. But in the history, here's a little fun fact, a little stat. The chaos have never beaten the water dogs in the history of the PLL. Boom. So I think that trend continues. I think that the Water Dogs win this game outright, and I'm going under 23 and a half. But that might be the total opposite. They might like really want to beat the Water Dogs because of that. 
Sure. Well, you could have you, yeah, you you said the, the same. Thing. Yeah, the Atlas and the Whip Snakes last week. Um, Dan, <laughs> I, I mean, so, sorry for Duke stealing stealing all the big <laughs> stats here. I didn't realize he was going to be a bit, such a big stat guy this week. I but, do. Uh, I do a stat do, guy. I try and do the stats thing, but I was. I mean, like, I I don't know how to quantify. Uh, seven dudes come back to the team and they all immediately get a shot at the goalie that just robbed them of an NL, uh, an NLL championship. Like <laughs> with how, how with more space to shoot at, right? With like a ton of space to shoot, they all get to play offense together and they get to shoot at Dylan Ward again. And the net is like way bigger now. Um, I'm on the chaos in this game. I think you know. I know dudes. Oh, let's debunk some faceoff stats. You know who has, who has the second best clamp win rate in the PLL? Uh, I'm probably gonna say TK. It is TK. The only player who wins more clamps than TK is Connor Farrell. So, you know, I, I think if they can get some wing play, which against Ryland Reese and Zach Courier is a big ask, but if they can get some wing play from the guys that got back, if it's McKay with a pole, or if, you know, they're able to get uh, Glissini involved there a little more, or Zach Geddes, you know, I, I think they'll be able to steal possessions. And their offense, you know, with all these guys coming back, it's not like they need time to gel because they've all been playing together. They just now get to do it outdoors. Um, I think there's a chance you see Tohoka in his PLL debut. You know, I think cracking the righty side of that lineup isn't easy, but I think Tohoka maybe gets his shot this weekend. Um, and if he does, that's a great stage for him, and it's a great opportunity for him to to really bring it, you know, for his first time in the PLL. So I, I kind of like the, the the vibes of the chaos in this one. You know, I think, like I said, TK winning clamps. Um, Blaze is, is still, you know, MVP-level goalie. I really do. I know we started the show by, with – Duke saying that the chaos defense isn't any good, but you know, Jared Newman won defensive player of the year. Jack Rollett's a defensive player of the year finalist and Brett Kennedy looks awesome. So, you know, I, I think down low, they're still mean, they're still physical and they're, you know, the right kind of matchup for a water dogs offense that doesn't like to play that well, that kind of, that kind of game at attack. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm on the chaos with points in this and I'm going to go under as well. I will say that I do. I like the chaos defense. I am a big fan of the chaos defense. I, I've actually been on the record that I am. I'm just saying stats are stats right now. Like you're not a stats guy. Them, oh, I, you dude, fucking you're not, asshole! Dude, you don't you're fact not check anything. To be a you don't fact check no, fucking dude, dude, You're not dude, allowed to be dude, a stats guy. Well, Dukes does have a stat, and a stat named, after, named him. after me. Yeah. What is and your stat? By the way, Joe Keeks. Joe Keeks faded me. I went into this. This is a public, private conversation I had with Joe Keeks. Uh, I'll read it. Joe, out we know you're listening right now. Yeah, this is this is me calling him out on the public airwaves. Are you so revealing? Him. Yes. Oh, you're wait, revealing mind, private fuck. conversations. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Fuck. I'm such an asshole. I, I DM Joe Keys. I said this conversation never happened. But do you have any analytics like last year? I'm trying to dive into some analysis for my picks. And he he, he I thought he didn't respond, but he said I always knew you're a numbers guy, and then sent it. This is honestly like very embarrassing. Can we just cut this? This out? is why you shouldn't be. A, this is why you should be a stats guy. <laughs> I think I think that you should be suspended from using stats for at least two weeks after that. No more well, stats. Yeah, the last time, the How last you time I say anything without stats. The last time that anyone threw analytics at my face, I beat the algorithm, <clears throat> and I have a stat named after because of it. Well, all right. So here's the thing. Um, oh, really quick. So, yeah, go ahead. Really, just one more point. I mean, you, you um, can take as long as you want. This, th- yeah, thanks. This is this is a good podcast. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched my goalie challenge with Jared Newman, by the way. Um, did you, I, you guys, I was, did, did I, was I was about to I was about to bring that up. So did you notice how he missed Cage a couple of times? Yes. My dude's percentage was off the walls. So we were talking about that before we recorded. Um, you you were still setting up the podcast studio. Um, but yeah. So if if anyone hasn't seen it yet, head over to the Crease Dives YouTube account. Uh, you can check out Dukes' goalie challenge with Jared Newman. Um, I, I am a little bit, and I, I don't want this to be taken as Jared Newman slander because I'm not the guy on this podcast who does that. That's that's the other guy. Um, but <laughs> but it I was a little bit disappointed in his. Um, it, it just didn't look like he really wanted it. Right, like that. That was a that was a matchup that I think he really could have ate. I think he could have really let some fly. He could have backed you off the plate with a couple quick ones to the thigh. Um, but the fact that he started off—I mean, no spoilers or anything—but started off with the backhander that missed the cage. A little disappointed in that. Wanted a, a little bit more carnage out of that one. So you have to imagine 
this is a game right now, especially with those numbers coming out this week um, on, on the video. So what did he go? Three for 10, maybe with a bunch of miss. I, with I, a bunch of Dukes. Yeah. With, with, with a bunch, with of, a bunch of Dukes. So I think that Jared Newman is primed though for a two bomb in this game because he probably feels a little embarrassed that he only stuck three against uh, the best backup goalie in Garden City High School history. But you, I mean, you might also, you could also look at it being like, wow, like he, I, he was so scared of me. He was, like just, I have real estate in his head. Yes, he just yes, couldn't do. He, yes, he's got the yips. Sometimes you just get the yips. That's, that's you just get the yips when you go against me. It's I mean, I, I, feared than loved. I went. I I did my part. I hopped in cage. I was ready for one hundred fifteen. Oh no, no one's no one's arguing that you you did your part. I mean, right now your save percentage in the PLL would probably be leading the league. I mean, I heard if you were listening very closely. Well, you um, see, besides you the fact PLL, that you got. Besides the fact that you got William Perry uh, kicked off of a PLL roster, so that doesn't really count right now. I think me and Dan could put a case. We, we got to get Will Perry on the Redwoods or something, Dan. We'll get to that after, but here, <laughs> here's, here's, my, here's my case. I think that Jared Newman, he, he either gets a two-point goal this weekend and ends the Duke, Duke's curse, or he might not score the entire season, and we are looking at another Duke's curse. All right, well, this is a must-score game for Jared Newman in week four. Um but yeah, I, I do think um, I do think the addition of all those bandits guys are going to be a huge. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's you're bringing back like your entire offense. Um, I mean, the fact that you can bring in all these guys and have an offense that's so deep that you can put Austin Stotts into the player pool um, definitely means you guys are going to be loaded moving forward. Um, I'm very very excited to watch Tahoga play for Andy Towers. I think um, you know, especially with Tahoga's game, like he, he needs a coach who will allow him to go out there and just kind of figure out like the shit on his own, kind of let him do his thing for a little while. Um, who's going to give him that energy and not really keep him on, you know, too tight of a leash. And I think that Andy Towers is, is the perfect guy in this league to do that. So I think that Tahoga is going to thrive with this team um, right off the bat. Maybe not like, maybe it'll take him a little while, but I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, he's, he's such a talent that he'll be able to figure it out pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, I, I forget which one of you said it, but I mean, this chaos defense going up against um, this water dogs offense. I mean, it's just like two totally different personalities. Um, don't think that these water dogs guys are, are really going to like getting bullied quite that much. Definitely a game where um, if Michael Sowers isn't even close to a hundred percent, I'd make sure that he's definitely stays out of this one. Um, you know, just given his history, I think that that defense is just a, a little too much, too big of bullies for these. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the water dogs had, they have a lot of Baltimore in them, right? A little, little flashy, but they don't like to get touched. Um, and I think that the chaos defense is, is going to really punish them for that. So I'm big on the chaos in this one. Even though that this Water Dogs offense has already proved to beat beat this chaos de- t- chaos defense twice, Ryan Brown also I think has a pretty listen. Good these these are these are these are two teams. Whenever they play, you can throw out the record books, right? <laughs> Just two teams, <laughs> a lot of bad blood. Throw it, you know. Um, I can't right. wait, Jordy. This next one, I'm pumped. Well, this next, all right, cool. So, d- did we get all of our picks in that one? <laughs> Yeah, dudes, aren't you the biggest cannons hater ever? Shut up, Billy. Let, let Jordy let Jordy roll into the next game. All right. Well, so those are our Friday games and heading into Saturday. Saturday, 6 p.m. ESPN Plus. We've got the Cannons and the Chrome, the, the two teams that Dukes just picked to finish dead last this year. Uh Dukes a hater of both. Uh, but primarily the cannons. Uh, but no, if, if you head on over to the Barstool Sportsbook, we've got Chrome minus one and a half in this game. Uh, Chrome coming off of a big comeback win over the Water Dogs to start off week three. Uh, cannons coming off of getting spanked. They're coming into this game with their tails tucked between their legs after getting a 20 burger hung on them by the archers last week Uh, on the money line. You've got cannons as the dogs at plus 145 Chrome heavily favored here. Minus 186 over under set at 24 and a half. Um, I mean, this is, this is a game right now where this is really going to impact where the Chrome finish or not the Chrome where the cannons finish in the final standings of the season. So uh, pretty big, uh, implications on this one dan let, let, let's start off with you again let's let's get you going on these saturday games with cannons and chrome at 6 p.m so i kind of like the cannons here i know the chrome have been like pretty pretty much unstoppable these last 
three weeks or two weeks, really, I guess it is. But they're, and, and their attack has been great. But the cannons do a couple things well that I think uh, let them kind of, you know, get the edge in the matchup here. So we're, here we go with the stats, Dukes. Are you ready? You got your pencil and paper ready? You're going to start writing this yeah. stuff down? The cannons have nine goals on 24 shots coming out of two-man game initiations, right? So just under 40%. The Chrome have allowed 51 uh, assisted opportunities this year, which is the second most in the league. The Cannons shoot 16 for 44 when their shots are assisted, right? So when it's an assisted opportunity for somebody, Cannons shoot 16 of 44, which is an incredibly high rate. The, the Chrome allow these opportunities to happen all the time, and it's what the Cannons do really, really well. You know, they run those two-man games with Nolting out of the box, who looks awesome. And, of course, with Lyle, you know, I know Lyle's questionable again this week, but I think if he could go last week, I think you'll see him out there again. Um, you know, those those kind of two-man games and then finding Shane Jackson and Ryan Jenner, shooters like that, away from the ball, um, I think puts this team in a position, you know, to to at least cover in this one. Um, the, the challenge here, I think, for the Cannons will be dealing with the Chrome defensive midfield, Terrafenko and Messenger. And Hawes are incredibly physical, and they're going to you know, muscle through guys on those two-man games. I think if you see situations where Asher and Olting is mess- matched up with Terrafenko or with Messenger, it's going to be like just the heavyweight fight, two gigantic dudes trying to come up with some leverage. But um, I think the Cannons can hang in this one. I, th- I think the Cannons have an offense that, that can do battle. I think Bones Kelly has gotten out to a great start for them facing off, and I think you know, that could continue again uh, this week. Even even with Connor Kelly or excuse me, uh, Connor Farrell having the year that he's having, um, so you know I, I kind of like the look of of uh, of the cannons in this one. Billy, you want to go? Come on. I think. I mean, I'm not trying to jump on the can jump on the cannons like you do, but I honestly think Chrome is an absolute wagon, and hopefully, unless they get into a trap game, they're gonna just mop it up. But. That may be a pretty vanilla answer, but that's like looking at that game. That was just my gut. So, I mean, this, there's anybody that's been listening to us. This is just an ego bet. Like if I was sat here and I took the cannons, I would be the biggest asshole in the world. It, it's Chrome minus one and a half. Don't think about it. But at the same time, Dan, I was saying this about the league. I was like, once this is everyone that follows the PLL kind of knows that the couple, that past couple of years. Once you think you know what's about to happen, the opposite happens. So you're you saying that you, you think the cannons could hang tight in that plus one and a half. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I, you are absolutely wrong. Here's why. Because that could fucking happen. But I will say that I also, I think it might have been you too, where I was talking about the cannons just allow Morocco to just get shot on at an astronomical rate. I think that. This really is the cannons. The cannons' forte this year is going to be Morocco has to have a big game or they get screwed. So I actually am going to bet on the Chrome shooters. Um, especially, I love the way that Justin Anderson's playing. I think off the dodge right now, he's playing like an absolute horse. Um, he's probably like top five in unassisted shots. So yeah, I, I really like Chrome. Um, I really like what I've seen out of Wisnowskis. So yeah, I mean, and I, right, right now, do they, their rookies look legit? I mean, like Nick turn. I mean, he's not going to be on long Island, but he is going down, down to Baltimore. So I'm going to take the Chrome and I'm going to bet on my ego. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, the, cannons, me, the cannons oh. defense, the, the, the a, a cannons defensive possession ends in a shot 34% of the time. It's the second highest rate in the league. They just let Morocco just eat a million shots. And yeah, I, I said it last week because they decided to do that against the archers and look where that got them. So and I will, and also, um, what was like Jacob Pulver? So I was doing the uh, All Star Game voting for the PLL, and he's having a great year. I think he's an awesome defender. But yeah. the the reason I didn't vote for him because I'm like, yeah, you have to cause turnovers, you get ground balls. But I'm like, you, you guys, you're you're allowing him to see so many shots. You're putting Morocco in a position where you're like, hey, in two weeks, you guys don't win some ball games. You're looking at Colin Curse going into the game. So I'm like, that's the only reason I left Pulver off my All Star Game. Full transparency. That's why I left him off. But yeah, uh, I'm excited for this one. My ego, my ego is either going to take a hit or I'm going to be the cockiest motherfucker when it comes next episode. I, I will say the Cannons defensive strategy of let's try and cause some turnovers and let our goalie see a ton of shots. Uh, that was the chaos more, uh, you know, mode for the last couple of years and it, it helped win him a title. So 
it's it's kind of hard well, to like. It, it, it to, works. To it works. When, uh, of... It works when you have Blaze in between the pipes. Yeah, I think I week this, one I... and week two, Morocco was looking as good as any goalie in the league, and then he got uh, he got he got hit with an Archer shooting team that's like, you know, it shoots better than anybody. Morocco is a starter in this league. I love his game, but I, I I'll always say this: if Morocco saves fifty eight percent of his shots in the Cannons games, fifty eight percent or more. The Cannons should win the ball game, and if they don't, like it, it's on the offense. Uh, that's how it's kind of gonna go. But yeah, I think Morocco is a great goalie. All right. Well, I'm I'm just I'm glad that Dan uh, gave like a, a thorough analytical approach to why he's choosing the Cannons in this game because this is just the the Jordy gut check of the week. Uh, that I'm I'm riding with the Cannons on this one. Again, similar reasons why. Uh, you, you know, you, you, you think, you know, what's going to happen in this league and it just turns around, it kicks you in the dick and it says, you have no idea. Um, I think that water always finds its level. I don't think that the, I think that the Chrome are much better than I had ever would have given them credit for before the season, but I don't think that, you know, they're a, a three and O like ass kickers United, like squad of the PLL. Like, I don't think that they're that unstoppable. Um, so, you know, I, I think that they've just been on, on such a heater right now that eventually they have to cool off. I think that this is going to be uh, the game for that uh, as, 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 as a big time weather guy, like it's going to be, you know, mid eighties in Baltimore on a Saturday night, 6 PM, get a nice little breeze rolling through there. Smell through that breeze. Is, is, is that some, what, what, what are we cooking up there? It's Lyle Thompson and whatever defender's ankles he's about to be chewing on. So I think that we get a big no. time Lyle game. I think that, uh, I, I think that the cannons come out on top of this one. So cannons money line, uh, and, and give me the over as well. I'm also taking the over, but that's also my other point is I think that Mike Manley right now, I put down as my defensive player of the year. That was another reason why I'm taking the Chrome. I think that you don't really stop Lyle. But you can try to contain him. You can try to make him not as effective. So, yeah, I like the way that Mike Manley and that defense is playing ball right now in general. I love Scannoni and Cage. So, yeah, I, I really do like the Chrome. But, Jordan, this is, this is our bowl. If you, looked at, if you look back at our preseason game, this is a, I said a that loser, the Cannons loser leaves the, town. Loser leaves town. I mean, it, it'll be awkward for the, for the Cannons to win and the Chrome are like 3-1 and one and the Cannons are 2-3 and three or whatever they are. And I have to look at you and be like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah cannons will move to two and they're two and two um oh sweet yeah I'm, i mean they they are they're one and two against yeah. the spread right now and uh and, and i mean cromer they're three no three no against the spread so i mean cromer rolling and that's exactly why i think that uh they start to rust up just a bit this week um all right and then that leads us into the last game of the weekend the biggest game of the weekend actually because we will have jake marsh a part of my take on the call for this one so it is saturday night 8 45 on the plus we've got the archers coming off of that hot win over the cannons last weekend taking on the atlas uh so the the bulls coming off of a, a tough loss to the whip snakes their first loss of the year uh right now the atlai are favored on the barstool sportsbook minus one and a half uh, but both teams, if, if you're looking at the money line, it's they're both uh, getting minus 113 on the money line. So a bit of a toss up here. And the over under the biggest of the weekend, we've got 25 and a half. Um, you know, obviously when the archers put up 20 on their own last week, that's that's going to jump that number up. And also, I think the Atlas only putting up nine just means that they have a bunch in store for us on Homewood Field with Jake Marsh on the call. Uh, Billy. You, you're, you're, you're spent a lot of time right next to Jake. Uh, any, any inside scoops on how he's feeling heading into this Saturday night, eight forty five call. I think he's going to will a lot of goals. We're going to try to get a bet on the Barstool sports book about, uh, getting the over boosted for this game. I'm seeing he's, he's trying to predict. He thinks he wants to have a bunch of goal calls. He's, Thought he's like brainstormed different names for the different goals. He's going to say, he's going to throw out some zingers. Uh, I don't know if we're talking penthouse, uh, uh, penthouse, provolone. <laughs> penthouse provolone, but he's got some in there, but he wants it to be an over game. He wants to call a lot of goals and he wants to bring energy every time it happens. So, you know, it's definitely going to be something you got to tune into. 
All right. Uh, Dan, how are you feeling? Uh, I mean, the archers obviously look like everything was clicking for them last week. Uh, Grand Amet still questionable on the injury report. Um, I thought for sure that he'd be in last week after his little Instagram shenanigans uh, on, on the story. Maybe he's fresh for this one. Who knows? Um, Atlas, little, little, little tail tucked between their legs moment last week. So they're coming in looking to bounce back. Uh, so how do you feel about this game? Yeah, you know, I would thought I thought Amen was coming back last week too. I even made the memes and everything, and then they made me waste my good meme by scratching him right before the game. But he's got, you know, he, he's coming back from a hamstring injury, and it's the kind of thing where like the, you're never really all the way back, and just one bad step makes you feel like you're aggravating it again. So, you know, you hope he can play. Um, and whether he does or not, I don't. I don't know if it'll matter all that much. I still like the archers a little bit in this one. I like the plus one and a half. Um, the archers offense ends their possession with a goal 48 and a half percent of the time, nearly half of their possessions end in a goal, which is just a flat out ridiculous number. The next best number in the league is like 38.5%. And I don't know how many other teams are even over 30 and the, the archers are scoring basically half the time. Um, the, the thing that's going to knock the ball, knock the favor away from the archers in this one is that Trevor Baptiste, I like dudes think Baptiste is, is probably the MVP right now at, at the worst he's on the metal stand he's been that good um if Justin Inacio still doesn't have the visa issues sorted out and the, the Canadians can't play and it's going to be either Frankie Labetti or somebody from the player pool again Baptiste could have a day that's like astronomically good and and the Atlas will just have the ball a ton um you know the first that I gave you about the Archers possessions ending in goals is great because when they do get the ball they make it count they score um, so I, you know, I, for that reason, I kind of like them. I also like them because, uh, Jack and Cannon, you saw it last week and they, I think they mentioned it or maybe Keegs mentioned it, but he's got this weird goalie thing where at the doorstep, like when a guy is right in his face, he saves the ball like 49% of the time. He's unbelievable in a one-on-one -on -one with the shooter, like right on top of him situations. And again, on two pointers, he saves it like 60% of the time. He's one of the worst in the league. Um, the thing about the archers is that they can shoot and score from anywhere. So if you tell the archers, Hey, look, you can't have a doorstep goal in this game. They'll say, okay. And Tom Schreiber will shoot twos. Will Manny can shoot from two, you know, Matt Moore can play from anywhere. Um, they've got shooters all over the place that can beat you from wherever on the field. They need to beat you from. That's why they score so often. So I think the archers can, when they have the ball, create quality offense to get shots that they like wherever they want to get them. If they think they can beat Concanon from certain spots, then that's where they'll try and get to. Um, the question in this one is going to be, do they have enough possessions? Are they able to counter Baptiste well enough to, to stay there? And I think they can. So I'm going to take the Archers plus one and a half. And even though 25 and a half is a massive number, uh, I think you kind of have to be cheering for the over in this one. The Atlas took, you know, I, I know they only scored nine against the Whips. I think they took like 45 shots in that game. They, they really just had an awful shooting night. Costa Vila was like 0 for 9. They couldn't get anything by Burn Lore. Um, you know, so I, I think they'll have a little better luck with their shooting this week. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to try and cheer for, for Jake to get as many goal calls as possible. And I'm going to be on the over in this one. Yeah. I'm taking over as well, but I think Atlas might end up edging it out against the archers even though the archers like that stat we just listed they just blow teams out they just put up points i just it's crazy but but i think the atlas might be the first guys to like be able to compete with them at the face off x with possession and like you know maybe stop the bleeding if the archers really start going hard and getting points yeah i Dan, you kind of nailed all the points that I was thinking of going into this game, but I am leaning oh, towards Damn it, Alice. Dan. Hell yeah, Dan. Dan. I mean, we can't let still, Dan go first. Don't let me go fucking first. stats again, Dan. Don't let me go first next I time. Know. Yeah, you you gotta, you know, don't invite me to do this. Jordy, Jordy I blame you. you blame, I blame you, because I got to see. I need it it sounds play. like we're all just cheating off him in the test. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm looking over Dan's And post just edit this to replay what I said when Dugues is supposed to talk. Yeah, but the, so the I'm picking the over in the Atlas. I think that the Atlas offense is the only team that can really compete with the Archers offense. Just when you go on six on six versus six on six, I also don't think that Jeff Teeter, Brian Costabile will go quiet, quiet two weeks in a row. That's just something that I find unfathomable. So I'm gonna bet on those guys. I'm gonna bet on Baptiste going 80 percent or plus this weekend. 
Um, even if you get Anasio who comes back, I think Anasio is going to be a great, great faceoff guy in this league. But I've alluded to it in previous episodes that he's taking a couple weeks off now. He's brand new to these rules, coming from college. So even if he comes back, I'm not very confident that he'll be able to neutralize Trevor Baptiste, even given the fact that I'm pretty sure that they faced off against each other in the USA Canada game and Anasio did pretty well. So I think with the rules, Anasio getting adjusted this week, I'm going to bet on Baptiste, bet on, bet on those possessions. In the same sense, that's why this game could go under. So if the archers don't really get the possessions that they need, the Atlas could just run up the score. And then, and then it's not saying the archers offense is necessarily bad, but just saying they didn't get the possessions that they needed to score. And you nailed it with Ken Cannon. Nailed it. He is so good inside. It's why you saw Jay Carlson with zero goals last week. And it's why you saw that the whip stakes were able to extend the field, keep the game out of reach because of the two point bombs. So that's why I'm leaning over. I think the archers are going to be able to extend the field against Ken Cannon when they have the ball. But I still think that Atlas minus one and a half is the play. The, Will Manny is off the, when he gets an assist, he's looking like he's an MVP form too. Oh, I think it's his best year in the league. So this is going to be a good game for Jake to call because we all think there's going to be a lot of goals, which probably means the exact opposite. And we're going like six, no, five. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because this is the Jordy speak it into existence of the week. Uh, I, I'm, I think that Jake, he deserves to, to call an overtime game winner. Uh, so I think that this game, even though it's a little bit of a later start, might be a little tough for us 30 and overs to stay up for. I think that this one goes into an extra frame, an overtime game winner, uh, which is why I have to lean on Archers plus one and a half just because the game's going to go to extra. Uh, I, I like the Atlas, though, to win it. Uh, and because it's Jake on the call, give me the over. The over, oh, the over under right now in the Barstool Sportsbook, 25 and a half. Pfft, this is going to be a 35 goal game. Give me Atlas, <laughs> Atlas 18, Archer 17. Wow. Speaking and you know what the fun fact is? Uh, Dan, you might not know this about our show, but we've never lost a bet. Oh, good for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah never, with, ever. Never. Yeah. Never, we never no, check. Me neither. We always know. We, we don't count losses. Much. That's why. Yeah, we don't count losses. <laughs> By the way, the over lie. the over in that game is twenty five and a half. So <laughs> Vegas. So Vegas is you know, like, we gotta remember the over isn't just a set number that just happens. Like the over is, uh, about three. Uh, yeah, it's higher than most. So. <laughs> I, I that's phenomenal stat, Billy. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> Like, oh, I, have, I know we're all saying over, but you got to remember the over changes too. <laughs> I know, I know it's common sense, but sometimes you just got to reiterate that when you're being very irrational. Yes. Yes. No, the over, it might seem too high if you're betting on the PLL week in, week out. If, make, if it seems too high to you, it's probably because Vegas has a reason why it's so high. So you bet high. If you're like, oh, it's too many goals. It's never too many goals. Who doesn't like betting on the over? Who doesn't like listening to Jake Marsh on ESPN Plus this weekend? Make sure you tune in. And make sure you're betting with the Barstool Sportsbook. Jordy, did you like that plug? That was a fantastic plug. Uh, also, make sure that you guys are following uh, at Dan Arestia on Twitter. Uh, Dan, thanks for, for coming on with us. This was fantastic. Um, always nice to hear someone uh, talk about these games in a – in a, in a way that actually makes some sense. Uh, so great to have you on here. We'll, we'll definitely do it again uh, at Dan Arestia on Twitter. Uh, I mean, if, if you're listening to the podcast right now, you probably already follow him, but maybe just like tell your friends to follow him as well. You can also catch his stuff again on lacrosse flash and his picks on pick wise. Uh, a, a, anything to leave us with here, Dan? No, man. I hope you guys get some player props up on that Barstool sports book this weekend, man. I'm trying to get it on some of those too. I want to yeah. hit as many of those as I can. That's where my that's where I've been doing my damage so far this year. So give me some of them to put my money on. But yeah, I appreciate oh, you guys fun. having me on. This has been a ton of fun. It's great to go through this stuff with you guys. Yeah, uh, no, no player props just yet. But again, make sure that you guys are looking out for the Rabel and uh, the top. Do we still have the top cheese going as well? Uh, we'll get some top cheese going. Uh, probably the two Saturday games. Yeah, we'll try our best. 
Yeah. All right. And uh, also make sure you guys are following us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at the crease dive on both and hammer that YouTube channel with subscriptions. Again, these, uh, these episodes come out Thursdays, 5 PM on our YouTube for a little, I mean, if, if you're subscribed to the YouTube, you get these picks in a little bit earlier than everybody else. When these uh, podcast episodes come out on Friday morning. So hammer the YouTube subscriptions. And in the meantime, we'll be keeping it low to high until the day we die. We out.